Hey, this is Zoic DF, and we got kind of a fun one here today. We're doing Flareon 2022, Challenge 11, the last challenge, which you would think was going to be a really hard one, but actually turned out to be pretty simple. Uh, we're going to solve it here in like a 10 minute video. Um, so it's all about a Python installer uh, executable. So it's a Python script built into an executable, actually then packed up and uh, hardened with Pi Armor, um, which in theory makes it really hard to look at typical things we've done in the past with. Um, uncompiled six aren't going to be too super useful. Um, but we'll do a little bit of dynamic work. We've actually show, show how to solve it two different ways. Um, once by hooking uh, the encryption function and getting the flag that way. And then another time just by dumping memory and pulling it out of memory. So um, I think it's a really interesting challenge and uh, I hope you enjoy it. All right, so I've got the binary here and we'll take a look at this. Um, we can double click on it to run it and it pops up and does something real quick and then goes away. Um, I can run it here from the command line and it goes away pretty quickly as well. Um, we can, it's actually always worth, when you run something like this, if you want to try to get it running and kill it, you can, this is actually a useful tip here. We've now got a bunch of Python stuff dumped out, so we could pretty quickly figure out that we're dealing with a Python wrapped up into an exe file. Um, but we didn't need to do that. That's just sort of an extra bonus there. Um, we can also run this, let's see, we'll run Wireshark. Uh, we'll select all our interfaces. And if we run it again, all of a sudden we get we're getting DNS requests for www.evil.flareon.com. Um, this is where we can come into our host file and we can add this in. Uh, evil. Oh, it was, what was it? It was www.evil.flareon.com, like that. And so now we can reset our Wireshark without saving. We're actually not going to see this um, as far as a DNS request, but we are going to see um, oops, a bunch of, a bunch of uh, requests coming in on port 80 and uh, resets getting sent back because nothing's listening on port 80. So it's now making trying to make contact on port 80 and we can just for sake of interest here, come down here, we can do netcat minus LMVMP port 80. We can run this one last time. And we, we've got a, a, a post request coming in here from evil, you know, we're looking for evil.flareon.com uh, with a flag variable that's base64 encoded, or looks like URL encoded and base64 encoded. So um, we could dive down trying to figure that out um, because we've, we've seen, or if we had looked at strings, we'd know this is a Python binary. We're going to go a little bit down that route. Um, let's see if we can cancel this. There we go. Um, I don't think we need Wireshark anymore. Um, so how do we take apart a uh, pi? If you look at the strings, this is pi installer. Um, and so we're going to want to use, um, there's, well, there's a couple ways to approach this. Um, the way we originally solved it actually, uh, I think it was a bit of a cheat. So I'll, I'm going to skip and come back to that to the end. Um, the more generic way to take apart a pi installer binary, um, we're going to start with, we'll run Python, uh, tool, let's see, where did I put this? py instructor, there it is. So we have this py instructor file, you can pull it off GitHub. Um, and if we give it the binary, it's going to run. And now we're going to notice something right here. Warning, the script is running a different version of Python than the one used to build the executable. Um, please run it in 3.7 to prevent execution errors. Um, so we'll do just that. If you don't have 3.7 on your VM, you can go find it on the Windows um, or at the python.org repository and download a copy. Um, I have a copy. We'll see. We'll run it here. Uh, C. Python 3.7, Python, like, like that. Now we get the same thing, but we don't get those warnings, which is nice. Um, and it says it successfully extracted it all. So let's see. Um, so we can go into 11.extracted, and we get a bunch of stuff in here. Um, most of the stuff, you know, so what Pi Installer does is it bundles everything it's going to need together to bring along with it. Um, this PYC file, 11.PYC, looks like a good uh, place to start. Um, the rest of this stuff all looks like kind of DLLs, um, different modules and things. Um, so we can, let's see, the first thing we could do is we could try to uh, uncompile this to get code back, right? So we can do uncompile six, which is another thing you can just grab off GitHub, uh, 11.pyc, and it's going to give us the Python. Unfortunately for us, this is wrapped in PyArmor. And again, we could have seen this just from the strings in the binary. Uh, Pi Armor is a Python. It's a, it basically says, give me a Python script and I will obfuscate it, pack into an exe for you and make it quote unquote irreversible. Um, so we've got this, it's not long, but this Pi Armor script is the script. Um, 
So how are we going to attack this? Uh, the first thing we're trying to do is see if we can run the PYC file itself. So can we, um, in fact, just to see if it's working, we'll start netcat up again. And we can say, um, we'll want to use the correct version of Python. If we don't, let's see, if we should do Python, it's going to say bad magic number in PYC file. And the magic number is basically saying it doesn't match up with this Python thing. If we see uh, I'm running Python 3.9 here, um, but if we do, let's see, slash Python, Python like that, and then we do 11.pyc. Um, it doesn't work, it errors out, but it errors out because it's failing, we're getting into a script now, and it's failing to import a module named crypt. Um, if we're just trying to get this working, we can actually copy, let's see, if we go in here, um, there is a pyz um, directory, so pyz extracted. So pyz is like an archive of compiled Python stuff. Um, and the PYZ extracted, uh, PY, inst whatever the extractor we ran is, PY inst extractor, something like that, um, is going to pull out those as well. And we can find the crypt.pyc right there. And if we just copy that into our current directory with the PYC, with, with the uh, 11.pyc, and we run this, we can see we're back, we, we've, we're back, we got it functional, right? Um, but we, we had that before, right? We can just run the exe, what is that bias? Um, what we want to do here is think about, okay, well, what can we modify? And so what if we remove uh, 11.pyc? Oh, no, I didn't want to remove that. Shoot. Uh, come up here. Where's my... Uh, that will re-extract. Sweet. Um, if we remove uh, crypt.pyc, much better. Um, and now we run it again. My extractor right there. We're again. We're back to getting the failed crypt. Um, so let's make the crypt, right? So we'll do Notepad plus plus, and we'll do crypt dot pi. Doesn't exist. Do we want to create it? Sure, we do. And we will just literally put in here paths, which is Python's word for do nothing. So now we're going to import this file. It's going to do nothing, and it's going to go back successfully. Uh, so now if we run this, we're getting the crypt module does not have an attribute arc four. Um, so it's clearly trying to reference an ARC, a crypt.arc4. So let's create one. So we'll create a class, ARC4, and we can say um, def init, because we know all, all classes have an init, and we'll just say self. Now it could take arguments, but we're just going to take a guess for now, right? Let's, we'll let the error messages be our guide. So we run this again, and now we can see uh, the init function takes one positional argument, but two were given. Um, so it's always going to take self because it's part of a class, but it need two were given means it tried to give it something else. So we'll call this like arg, and we'll make this like print arg. Let's see what that was. And we can see here. So cool. Okay, a couple things happened here. One, we can see right here it printed out. Oops, pi armor protecteth my key. <laughs> um, that is what's getting passed into the ARC four class, and then it's getting an error and it's saying. It doesn't have an attribute. The ARC4 object doesn't have an attribute encrypt. Um, so let's come down here and we will say def encrypt. Um, now we can guess there's probably going to be some arguments, but again, let's just, uh, for the sake of argument, not put them here. And we can run this. And so we're still getting our key printed out. And now it's saying, well, encrypt takes one positional argument, but two were given. So I've got it taking one, two were given. We'll again say arg. Now, almost certainly this is the thing that's getting encrypted, but let's continue for now. Um, we can save that and run again. And now we're getting up somewhere else. We're getting pushed into a thing here where it's saying a bytes light object is found, but none type was returned. Now that's probably because encrypt was supposed to return something and, and we're trying to deal with it. Um, there's a couple ways we could attack this. For one, let's start. I'm interested in knowing what was getting passed here. So I, I could do my print arg again. In fact, can be kind of anticlimactic because when I print arg, I print the flag. And so what it was actually encrypting was the flag. So we've, we've solved the challenge. We're done. Um, we can also try some things where we do things like um, we can do import PDB. So let's import the debugger. I'm kind of curious. I actually have no idea if this is going to work or not. What happens if we run this now? Um, okay, so it didn't help us. It, I was hoping that maybe PDB there would hit us on this crash later, and it didn't. Um, we can definitely do like that. Uh, pdb dot set oops not dot set trace like this and now when we import that we'll print the arg which we did and now we're in here um, if we list you can see where we are um, I don't know if we can step out of this I think I think we can't 
Um, yeah, because if you just try to um, continue running, it's going to fail. Let's see. Um, let's try one more thing. We queue here and we that. Um, the next thing that gets called is base64 in code on S. Um, do we have a list? So we're, we've somehow gotten back into the library. So it's not quite something. We're still not seeing the pie armor stuff. So, um, but the point is we did, we were able to step in and say, oh, here's this interesting encrypt function. Um, what's happening there? Let's look at the arg and we got the flag. Um, the other way to solve this, if we go back to the very beginning here, we're going to go back. We don't need anything extracted. We just have this binary and we run 11.exe and it catches. And now it's hanging here and it's waiting for the response. So it sent this HTTP request out. The server has completed the TCP handshake and said, yeah, I'm here. Okay, I'm listening to port 80. I talk port 80. Um, what am I going to do? What do you want me to you know, Oh, here's your request. Cool, HTTP request coming in. Now everybody's waiting for this server to send the response back and we're hung. Um, what we can do while we're hung is open up the task manager. And uh, here's 11.exe. We right click and create a dump file. Um, and you can see I've already done this. If we open the file location, here is 11.2.dump, the dump we just made. Um, I'm actually going to open this up in uh, HXD, my hex editor of choice on Windows. And if can I just drag this in here? I can. Sweet. So we've got this dump file. And this is this is the process memory of this uh, process while it's running. And so if we come in here and we do a control F for search and we can say like, look, let's, we're interested in flare, right? Cause that's, that's the string we always want to find. And we hit search all, um, we can see there are 26 results in memory right now with flare. And if we just start scrolling through here, we'll notice right quickly, like, look at this, here we are in, uh, we have at flareon.com and you can see right here, we actually have the full flag showing out right there. So this was one, um, we were kind of laughing how quickly we could solve this one because you just literally, uh, if you run it and dump the memory, you get the flag. So um, I don't think they intended us to be able to do that. But uh, again, when you're dealing with these um, frameworks that are going to encrypt things, this is a valuable technique. You want to look through memory and figure out what's going on. You get the, the hardest part is going to be making it crash in such a way that you can get a dump. You know, in this case, we benefit from the fact that we can control the web server. We can have the web server kind of hang responding, which gives us time to do that. Um, maybe that won't always be the case, but, um, yeah. So with that, uh, I'm going to call the video here. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, it's the last challenge in flare on. It was not the hardest, but this year by any means, but, uh, enjoyable and hopefully a useful lesson on how to attack, um, high armor binaries. So with that, thank you so much for sticking around to the end and I'll talk to you next time.